Hello and welcome to Get the Word in Your Face International. This is Pastor Cheryl Jackson coming to you with a word from the Lord. Our God is good. He is good all of the time, perfect in all of His ways, looking to perfect the things that concern us, looking to take care of us, looking to love on us and fill us up with joy. This is what He's promised us. He's promised us a life of joy. But it's not the kind of joy that the world can give you. It's not the type of joy that comes from having a child. It's not the type of joy from getting married and finding the person of your dreams. It's a joy that where you are anchored to the Lord. You know that you belong to Him. The one true almighty God, the most high God, El El Yon, El Che, the living God. It's the one the, the type of joy where you are connected to the Creator who created all things. You belong to Him, and He is yours. He made Himself available for us. He opened His arms wide and drew us into Himself. It's time for us to draw near to Him. It's time for us to get a closer look at the One who created the world and everything that's in it. We know that every soul on the planet belongs to Him. He's created all things for His very own purpose. And there's nothing selfish about God. It's just that He's the originator of all things. He's the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the ending. There's no one greater than the one who created all things. It is known that that from... Uh, Let's go to Romans real quick. Chapter 1, verse 20. Let's start in verse 19. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made even his in eternal eternal power and godhead so they are without excuse we are without excuse in in knowing that he is who he says he is it says that let's say it again for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made even his eternal power in Godhead. We should be in so much awe of him who created all things. Elohim, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He's in love with us. He wants us all for himself. He he desired to have us. When in the beginning doesn't doesn't it say that he he made us in his image. He made us in his image after their likeness, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He put he gave us this this uh, soul, this the spirit soul in a, in a body. And he gave us the power to choose. He also gave us power and authority. I know it was taken away for a while, but Jesus came and brought us back the authority. We have to know him in order to use this authority. Now, does Jesus say it in, in, in John 3? In 3, it, you know, it's impossible. You can't even see the kingdom unless you're born again. And we enter the kingdom by water and by the Spirit of God, by the Word and the Spirit. You must we must know the living Father of heaven and earth. We must know our Father. We have to fall in love with Him. And how do you do that? By coming every day before Him into His presence. We come into the secret place of the Most High God and we learn the voice of the Holy, of the Holy Spirit so that we can walk in His ways. He gives us, He's given us His divine nature, but that nature only comes because we're hanging around Him every day. We acknowledge Him in all that we do. We don't, 
try to think and, and lean on our own understanding about any situation or circumstance. We come to the Lord because we know He sees everything. He knows it all. Remember Ezekiel. Isn't that, was it Ezekiel? And, and, yeah, it was. And um, the Valley of Dry Bones. The Father, he, the Holy Spirit is the one that takes him there to see this great big valley of dry bones. And he asks Ezekiel, shall these bones live? And what does he say? You know. He wasn't trying to be smart with the Father. Then the Lord did this because he said that. He put the word of prophecy in his mouth to speak to the bones. And the, the bones got up and they, they waxed. They were a great, exceeding great army. He got to watch the, the, the bones come together and the sinews go, go upon the bones to hold the structure together. He saw the muscle come and form and the, the, the blood and the flesh and the veins. He saw everything coming together. And then he saw the breath of the Almighty breathe upon this army. But it was the Father. Because Ezekiel didn't try to imagine it in his mind to say, well, you know, um, let me see, let me come up with something here. Um, you know, he didn't do anything besides to look to the Father and say, you know. Because he knows that the Father has the power and the authority. And he's the one who gives him the power and the authority who speaks to his heart. And then Ezekiel speaks what the Father has given him. And it happens. What is supposed to happen happens. What is needed to happen happens. We have to speak those things that are not as though they are. Let me say that again. We have to speak those things that are not as though they are. If we want health and healing, we have to speak our healing. Stand in the mirror and say it. Lay in the bed and say it. Walk on the way and say it. You might feel the pain. You might feel the discomfort. But the devil's a liar. And so is that pain. It's not existing in heaven. And we don't have to wait to go to heaven to, for God to supply the need that we have here in the earth. He wants to, he wants, he's, he's given us, I want to say it the right way, his blood. His, he's given us his blood and he's given us his, his, his name. He's given us the testimony of Jesus Christ. God is our salvation. And it, in, in this day and age, where we know it's the last days right here, the last day that we're in and Jesus is coming soon we really must learn to be still in God still in him he's working a work when we can't see the work happening he will do what he's promised he will do he's, he, his name is salvation he's got to bring us the testimony of who he is Look what he does for Israel way back in the beginning in Genesis when they're talking about when Moses is up on that mountain getting instruction for how to bring Israel out of Egypt. Well, how does it say now? I am the who, who shall I say is sending me? Who, who by a whose authority am I going to this? I mean, he's got to go to a whole nation and tell them God wants his people to come worship him at Mount Hor. I think that's the mountain, right? I don't know. But anyway, read the words, so. But, so he's got to go tell this great nation that God wants his people to come worship him. Everybody. And God gives him this. I am that I am. Tell them I am so, is calling, is, is, is sent you. <laughs> now, come on. What's that to Pharaoh? Plus, his heart was hardened. He wasn't going to budge. And yet, God bring all these signs, all these miracles, all these wonders God did. 
to prove that he is who he says he is. I bet people begged Pharaoh to quit it, to cut it out, <laughs> you know? When that sea turned into blood and when the flies wouldn't stop, when the frogs wouldn't stop, when when diseases were all over their body, when the when the when the what is it comes and the locusts came and ate up all their food. I bet the people were begging, please, Pharaoh, change your mind, let these people go. But it took the death of every firstborn in order to let those people go. That's how hard his heart and his mind were. That's how closed up he was toward the, toward God. Okay. Before I veer off in another direction <laughs> well, the people that we are before every single day. But we live in a season of grace where we pray for everybody. And we pray for everything. Because we want what God wants. We want people to come into the knowledge of who He is. Hmm. Well, this is personal first. This is personal first because we must acknowledge God in all of our ways. We have to understand that who He is, what He desires. We need to fall in love with Him. Love is the greatest power on earth. Hate brings fear and torture. It kills, steals, and destroys. Hate is no good for anybody except for the fact that we need to hate sin. We don't hate people. I'll say it again. Even if people don't understand what they're in and what lie the devil has, has spun them into, no matter how great they are about this or feel towards this, and that's who we are. Whatever. That's not the point. We don't have to yell, that's sin! That's sin! Everybody knows. Well, let me say it the right way. We live in a very large world. People need to know the love of God. And the love of God didn't come to condemn the world. The love of God came to the, into the world that the world would be saved through Him. This is the Son, Jesus Christ, God is salvation. The Son of His love, the Father's love, came into this world to deliver us from the lie of the enemy. Came to deliver us from the kingdom of darkness where mankind, mankind cannot see. They can't see the living God. Every once in a while they get little pinpricks I know the Holy Spirit is in the world convicting the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment. But it's us who are a candle of the Lord, a flame in the world, lighting the way that leads to light. We're lighting the path. Now in our lives should be so much goodness going on. So even if, even if good isn't happening and people are dying in your life and it's really hurt you, Jesus got up and he saw all the people and he knew that they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he, he has experienced, Jesus has experienced death in his life. He understands what it's like to have people leave him. He knows what it's like to have people leave him. He knows what it's like when when a, when a loved one is just not there anymore or they hate you and they despise you for no reason at all he understands what that's like even as a child he understood that he was different and he stood out from the rest and i know he got picked on well, anyway the love of god is shed abroad in our heart by the holy spirit and we can draw all men to Christ because of the love we have with him. It's a relationship. But we must understand that the Father is. God is. That's where faith first begins. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. For those who come to him must believe that he is. And, that, and, and, and then look at that. After we've diligently come after him, we're seeking him with all of our heart, all of our mind, and all of our physical strength. It, it really is just a matter of getting up 
in coming to the Word. I'm telling you right now. It's a matter of getting up and coming into His presence, sitting down in the secret place of the Most High. It's not like some fiendish, you know, way of just reading the Bible and reading the Bible. I gotta read, I gotta read, I gotta read. We understand that we have a living God who wants a, a living and breathing relationship with us. Not ringing three Hail Marys or whatever it is that that others do with the, with the beads and, and putting food before gods and bowing our head to the ground and, and, and doing this three and four times a day or as many times as you feel like being obedient to God if, if that's really obedience. But true obedience is to understand that He is the living God who wants us all for Himself and He loves what He has created. He is alive, he is alive, he is alive, he is alive, he is alive. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, has always, always been. God is an eternal God with eternal power that's never ended. His word holds everything in its place. And that word is, is, is what he's saying our name. I think, I think our name is a hum. It was said, and it's said every day. <laughs> I anyway, that's another place. But this love that he has for us. He wants us all for himself. But we must come into the secret place of the Most High and allow the Spirit to be the teacher. I think I was getting ready to read Ephesians chapter 1 the other day on how he has given us his spirit. He is the earnest, the guarantee of our passage into, into when, like when Jesus comes and splits that sky, it's because we're, we have the Holy Spirit, we listen to his voice, we know him. We have the word and we have the spirit. We've practiced it right here today, we've practiced it every day that we're walking and talking and breathing in this earth we are acknowledging the father son and holy spirit now what does it say in proverbs again lean not on your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path yep we're talking about the light of the world who lights every man he's living on the inside of us he's directing our path I'm just, I'm really fixated on this love that we have in God and that He is alive, that He has a purpose for our lives. The purpose is for good. The purpose lifts up the name of the Lord. The purpose brings God glory. It causes all eyes to be on Him. You know, the reason that things are taking so long in the earth is not, is because God, our Father, does not want any man to perish. Yeah, God created the lake of fire for those that don't want to be with him. They will be cast into utter darkness, thrown out into the lake of fire. God has given mankind life to enjoy. Life to enjoy. He's given us himself. And he is that joy. What does it say? Something like, something about great, unspeakable joy. I forgot what it is, but anyway. <laughs> he wants us to have life and peace. He wants us to have every good thing, that everything that we need. He's seated us in heavenly places with Christ Jesus and afforded us everything that we need. He put everything that we need right there in the heavenly realm. And the only way to call those things that we see, that we don't see into the seeing realm is to go where he is in the spirit. That means sitting before him day and night, walking and talking with him day and night. This is your friend that is closer than any other, closer than any other. Nobody else can be in your heart with you. Nobody else can hear all the words that you say. They can't. You know, I, I would I would put this in here and say that the devil's anointing is in the past. 
he talks to you about past things or current things and puts a few puzzle pieces together and knows what you will believe but he doesn't know what you're thinking until you bat an eye until you give a twitch until your eye dilates that's how he sees things but God knows all things he sees us when we're laying down and when we're getting up. He sees us when we're walking and when we're talking, when we're breathing. He even gives us warnings in our dreams. You can read, uh, I think Job chapter 33 talks about the dreams that we have and why God gives them. Get a couple of translations and really break it down for yourself so you have an understanding. The Father wants us to have understanding. He wants us to have wisdom. He wants us to have knowledge. He tells us in the book of James, ask for wisdom. He will give it to you. He's not going to punish you. He wants to keep you out of temptation. He doesn't want you to go into be, being tempted of the devil and falling into the trap and says, well, you know, that was a lesson learned, you know. some A lot of the times we do not have to fall into the trap because we stopped and we asked the Lord for wisdom concerning our decision today. We can get up in the morning and plan our way. We can plan our month. We can plan a week, a year, but God directs our steps. And he directs our steps because we keep coming to him. He's not going to just direct your steps because it says it in the word, but because we have a, a relationship where we are listening for the sound of his voice we are waiting on him to, to direct our steps but it doesn't mean you don't do anything if that's the case I don't expect to work today I don't expect that those kids will be coming through my door at any time <laughs> I'm just gonna do whatever I want to do and just lay here just sit here and do nothing but that's not how it works just keep on doing the good things that you know to do you don't, you, uh, let me add this to the Lord our Father is not tempted with evil and I don't know if this is written or not but when we are tempted we are God is tempting us to do good we are his creation created for good works good works so where you might be tempted to view pornography if you're really listening you're going to hear a, a, another a, another voice in the inside saying go the other way let's do this today let's do that today let's, let's do something else you know the phone might ring something's going to happen that draws you to a good thing in order to put down the flesh yeah see because it's the Spirit of God who mortifies the deeds of the flesh all that sinful nature that is in our flesh the Father of heaven and earth has given us his spirit the Holy Spirit that's why I really didn't want to read Ephesians but when I want it didn't pop in front of me and I'm, I don't feel like searching for it <laughs> it's, I know it's kind of lazy but because it's important that we know that the reason that we've got the Holy Spirit living on the inside of us isn't just to get to heaven. Isn't just so that when and at that time when Jesus comes, we hear his voice and we're lifted. It is that the Holy Spirit mortifies the deeds of the flesh. See, the Spirit of God gives life to our spirit. Our spirit gets strong from listening to the Holy Spirit, from learning the sound of his voice when we lean on the Holy Spirit we learn how to discern good and evil I mean we just thought we knew it from what our parents told us no don't do this don't do that a lot of things they taught us was fear this and fear that but the Holy Spirit speaks a word to our remembrance so he, he, he's the one who brings the word to our remembrance he speaks a word to us and when we see it in the spirit 
we're able to get a handle on our flesh. So we really need to spend more time learning to hear his voice. We need to put on some worship music and, and worship the Lord. We need to open our Bible and read the Word. Act like we want to know the living God. His Word is living and active and really does move mountains. But we must have a relationship with Him. Jesus has a relationship with the Father. He finds a way to get get away from them disciples. <laughs> he finds a way to get away from the, His crew in order to spend time with the Father of heaven and earth. Alone time with Him. I, I used to say it all the time and I'll still say it. I can't function in my day, not the right way, without spending time with the Lord. We all need it. We all need it. In order to have the strength that we need in the inner man, in order to have the wisdom and the knowledge the guidance and the the courage in order to have what else the revelation the breakthrough in order to have that thing that you've always ever wanted you got to sit down with him come and know believe believe that he is God Jesus said it that all we need is the mustard seed of faith to move a mountain to move a mountain and yet none of us have moved it Anyway, figuratively speaking, faith is the beginning of faith, is knowing that God is. The Spirit of God is going to speak into your heart the words of life. When we grab hold of those words of life, and, and, and you got to look at the whole thing, look at, look at the whole thing. Who is the word of life? Jesus, Yeshua. Look, his name is God is salvation. He's our salvation. And every time we say the name of Jesus Christ, we are getting delivered. Deliverance is coming. Peace is coming. Every time we acknowledge Jesus, the son of the living God, life is coming into us. We're being shaped and we are being formed into the image of Christ. Jesus is the express image of the Father of heaven and earth. He's the exact representation. And the more we acknowledge the one who created all things and desires us for himself, the more steadfast we will be and the more unmovable we will be. And that's what we need. We need to be anchored to the Lord. This is the Father of heaven and earth who loves us with an agape love, an unconditional love. He will not forsake you. He won't throw you out. He will wash you and cleanse you from all of your unrighteousness, all of our unrighteousness. The Lord will cleanse us from it by his word. He'll push it right out of our system, out of our flesh. But we must come and behold him sitting in his presence taking time out with the living god in order for us to be that exact representation of christ to 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 hold be that true candle of the lord we must take time with him and remember this he works out all things together for our good. He'll never leave us. He'll never forsake us. He won't throw us out. He loves us too much. He'll supply all of our need. He'll give you the baby you desire. He'll heal your womb. He'll heal your head. He'll heal your heart. He'll heal your bone disease. Whatever it is that's ailing you, look in the Word and hold on to the promise. Because it's a promise that he made, and he he always keeps his promises. I believe it. This is the day that the Lord has made. And our testimony is God is salvation. He's deliverance. Not just a way into heaven, 
but he's delivered us from the kingdom of darkness and put us in the kingdom of his dear son. He's taken us out of the lie and brought us into the truth. Truth is reality through God's eyes. If somebody should say, what is truth? Like, like, like the pilot did with Jesus. Truth is the reality of life from the perspective of God through his eyes. His eyes see all of the earth. He's created the whole entire world, everything in it, has set up a time frame for us to be in. He knows the last day of mankind. The, well, I should say the last day of this grace generation. The last day of the church existence. He's got a, he's got a plan. But he wants to draw all men to himself right now. Many are called. Are you coming? Are you coming in to sit in his presence, to know his name, and to abide in him? Because he loves you with an agape love. And I say it again, it's unconditional. It doesn't matter what sin we've ever committed. It doesn't matter, I'm telling you. It really, it really does not matter. Whatever we have ever done, God can cleanse you. He can wash you. He will forgive you of all of your sins. And I'm sorry for whatever you have done, whatever I have done, I am sorry before the living God for you and for me. Of the thoughts that I thought, that I, that I thought, and the things that I've ever done, anything that I've ever touched, everything that I've ever put my eyes to, and my ears to, and my mouth to, whatever my body has done by my will, I ask the Father for forgiveness in all of me that he can have all of me and use all of me for his glory because in doing so my joy is so full because he is the living God I want his thoughts I want his will I want to put on Christ today and make no provision for this flesh he's the Lord of glory the Lord of hosts he sees the nature of the devil. He knows the nature of him that we were born into when we were born into this world. And yet he wants to wash us and cleanse us from all of our filthiness. And he's given us his spirit so that we would have his nature. But we must spend time with him in order to get washed clean from all the perversions that we've had in our lifetime. Jesus Christ has come and he's delivered us from the kingdom of darkness we are no longer ruled not our mind will emotions not our soul not our physical body is no longer ruled by the kingdom of darkness we have a father the father of heaven and earth we have the Lord Jesus Christ our Savior who's delivered us and the Holy Spirit living in us to guide us in all truth in the reality of life and we can mortify the deeds of this physical body in the bad evil habits that it was used to doing when it was in the earth and I pray the Lord of glory give you this revelation we have power because of who he is and he gives us the power to say no to the bad habit, and I, I call that a bad habit now. Sin is is is, is in the mind, and it, and then when it once it gets you, it, it gets hold of this body, and it brings the is into death. One separation from God, two death in this physical body. Okay, I gotta go. <laughs> But our relationship with the living God helps to kill the deeds of this flesh, the works of our, our of our soulish nature when we were in this world. Now we put on Christ and to make no provision for the flesh is to hear by the Spirit of God to know our God. You might put up barricades 
for yourself. You might put up physical boundaries so that you won't try, you know, step over your salvation walls. If you can see what I'm talking about. Because when we when we came into salvation, I know I have so much to say, but it keeps coming out. But when we can see where we're seated in heavenly places and we have this salvation all around us, it's like there's boundaries in our salvation. We don't want to step out into lust and the perversion and through the wickedness. We're like Psalm 84, I think it is. You know, I'd rather dwell in the, be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. I don't want it in my heart. I don't want it in my body. I don't want it in my mind. All I want is Christ. I want Christ in me. I want him to have his glory. We are the temple of the living God. The temple of the Holy Spirit. The light in the world. And he's taking, he's driving out the darkness. It's already done. Jesus has already destroyed the works of the devil. All the works of the enemy, he's destroyed it and given us power over our flesh. Jesus has power over all flesh and gave us power over ours. But we must submit ourselves, ourselves to him. And when we submit ourselves to God, he gives us the power to resist the enemy. James chapter 4. After you've suffered a while, I'm telling you, this is suffering for a while. Let me tell you about suffering. When we're true suffering is saying what you hear the Holy Spirit say. It's saying what comes to your remembrance against the, the thing that's coming against you. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. We've been delivered from the power of the dog. We've been delivered from the power and the curse of the law. Anything that was on the side of the curse that brought disease, that brought mental illness, that brought cancer, that brought any evil report, any tumors, any, anything. And even demons coming into your house and ruling your children, ruling, ruling, ruling your life, trying to, trying to oppress you. We've been given power and authority by Jesus Christ that they know that we know him start spending more time in him I don't know I have probably dropped off my subject again but take time in him and he will give you he will show you what you need today and you'll say that thing and you it will be get it will be Remember, the Lord's word never returns void it accomplishes what he sends it to do and he sends it by his spirit into your heart and when he, he sends it by his spirit into our heart it breaks up it annihilates you know? the enemy runs and flees in every direction because the light of God is shining through you that word brings light that word brings light read John chapter 1 right there in the beginning the word was in the beginning what is the word the word is life and that light that that word that is light lights the whole world is the 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 one true almighty God the one who created the world and all that there is in it created everything that there is the devil is a created being and all the demons that were fallen uh, that are fallen angels the, the principalities and the powers, all of this, God is over all of this, and he's given us the name Jesus. He's above all of these things. Lord, protect me and my household in the name of Jesus. Because of the revelation that he brings me. Because of the revelation he wants to bring us. We have got to see him for who he is. He's the the Father, the Elohim, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He created everything. There's nothing greater than Him. And He draws us to Himself and manifests His ways in our life. As we keep coming to Him, He keeps revealing Himself to us. And we can walk in the knowledge of Him and say what needs to be said in this world. 
See, Jesus gave us the keys to the kingdom. When he gave us the keys to the kingdom, I was talking about light. But read John chapter 3, I mean chapter 1, and study that for a minute. Just that first part right there where Jesus is the word and light and, and life and then light. Read that part right there. And you understand that the, the word, the entrance of the word brings light. It brings life and it brings light onto the path. All right, coming out of there again. But he wants to, that light is revelation. That light is wisdom. That light is knowledge. It's everything that we need in this mind of ours. That's why we come and we get transformed by the renewing of our mind. We put on Christ. We we come and we are. Hmm, I can't remember. Uh, come on, come on, Holy Spirit. I gotta go. So, oh, they're here. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Thank you, Father God, for this time with you. Thank you for sharing the word with your people. I love you so very much. Help us to have a closer relationship with you. This is Pastor Cheryl Jackson. I get the word in your face international. Have an awesome, blessed, truly great day. Bye-bye.